Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hey, family in Christ, brothers and sisters, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. We've got Olivier Melnick with us today. And before we get to him, I want to thank some friends who've been donating to Worldview Matters. Uh, we got a brand new donation from Cheryl in De Pere, Wisconsin. Thank you. Also, Brenda in Greenville, Michigan. And Pamela from Toronto, Canada. Um, God bless you, each one of you. And we've got many others. Thank you. Uh, shouting out to Minnesota, Nevada. Maryland, Ohio, California, Wyoming, Washington, New York, Georgia, Nebraska, South Dakota, South Carolina, Virginia, Iowa. Can you believe we have not heard from Texas? Come on now. I know there's a lot of you from Texas. No pressure, though. Um, a month from now, we'll be doing a fundraiser. We do it twice a year. Um, but anyway, uh, oh, one more thing. Tomorrow night, I will be speaking in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, at Calvary Sunrise Church at 6.30 p.m. There will be a Q&A at around 7.15. We'll be talking about uh, the biblical worldview and the attacks on today's believers, the church, and on God's Word, of course. So that's at Calvary Sunrise Church again tomorrow, uh, 6.30 p.m. Uh, boy, it's Thursday, April 11th tomorrow already. Okay, so um, I want to bring in this wonderful friend that I've been getting to know more and more recently. Love this brother. He's a Jewish believer in Yeshua. He's from France. He is the son of Holocaust survivors, and that's what we're going to talk about today. He's in, an internationally known speaker on anti-Semitism, and he holds a BA from Moody Bible Institute and a master's degree from Dallas Theological Seminary. I appreciate him equipping believers, equipping the saints and on this issue because a lot of churches are not doing it. Brother Olivier Melnick, welcome to Worldview Matters. David, thank you for having me on the show again. It's a pleasure uh, sharing some time with you. Yes. Now, I did want to mention, friends, we did go through uh, some of his, uh, mention his books last time, and he's got many, many books out there. Um, I think that was about a month and a half ago. We, we did two episodes with Olivier, and go ahead and bring up the book covers. I've got them here, but people can see them better. The End Times, Anti-Semitism, and then there is uh, The Time Is Now, and The Normalization of Anti-Semitism. Oh, by the way, I want to give out the website, Shalom in messiah.com shalom in messiah.com there it is there's where you can get the books and of course on amazon uh did i uh, give accurate information on that olivier yes david uh every, every everything we do is under shalom in messiah.com uh, that's that's also where i have my blog with my articles Great. and uh, where people can connect and in, in, in different ways and also where people can donate to our ministry to support the work that we're doing which is very important yes it is it is and we learned since october 7 2023 uh, and what happened, the aftermath, and what we've seen on college campuses and in the public schools and in American culture, we've seen how important your ministry is, getting the truth out there and the anti-Semitism off the charts. We've never seen it at this level before. So, yes, thank you for what you do. Before we get into your story, and that's what we're going to go back and do today, um, you wrote a brand new article, or just recent, I should say, at Harbinger's Daily. You posted it on your website, shalomandmessiah.com. Harbinger's picks it up. They do with, with mine as well. They're wonderful. And yes. uh, it's called, let's just briefly touch on this. I want you to just give a description because we don't have time to dive into it. Anti-Semites insist modern Jews are not descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, it's a head-scratcher to many in our audience to hear this. Olivier, could you just kind of give us a brief description and rundown of what you get into here? Yes. So this is, you know, when, when I do conferences, uh, you know, all over the U.S. and, and in some other countries, I, often I do Q&As, and in the Q&A, Almost every single time, there will be one person asking me, can you speak on the connection between the Jewish people and the Khazars? And, and, and so the, 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 the Khazars are a group of people that the, the, the country of Khazaria was, was, uh, used to be where uh, Russia and Ukraine is right now. And uh, it was about 
for about 200 years uh, between the, 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 the seventh and the ninth century, uh, they were, uh, they were on the map, uh, you know, with Kings and, and, you know, and, and whatnot. And, and they were, they were active and they existed very, uh, uh, very much during that time. And then they kind of disappeared. But during that time, uh, and I, I, I document that in my article, the best I can in a short article, uh, the, one of the king, uh, I believe his name is Bulan, King Bulan, uh, decided he wanted to uh, get religious. So he asked for uh, a Muslim, a Christian and a Jew to come to his palace and convince, convince him that their religion was the best. And it turns out that he chose uh, Judaism. So he he and his family and part of his court, and we don't really know how many people, but some people converted to Judaism from that point forward. And so there is a connection between the Khazars and Judaism, because again, that king and some of his family and possibly people within his kingdom converted to Judaism. Uh, that is, um, there's not too many details on that, but based on that, some people have claimed that the modern Jews, today's Jews, mostly Ashkenazim Jews from Western Europe and Europe, uh, uh, are all descendants of the Khazars. And when you think about it, uh, the, if that would be true, then th th what that means is that the, the Jewish people in Israel today are not the real Jews. So the claim of, 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 of these people for the land of Israel saying that it belongs to us, it, it, we, if, if the Jews are descendant of the Khazars, then the claim of owning the land of Israel would be invalidated. And, and basically that would give, give people all over the world the right to say, those are not the real Jews. They don't have a right to the biblical land of Israel. Wow. And that's basically giving fuel to anti-Semites to say, to, to push the agenda of Jews being descendants of the Khazars. But uh, I've got several books on my shelf uh, of research that has been done, especially in the last uh, few decades, 30 or 40 years, where DNA proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that the Jews of today are descendants of the Judean Jews of the Bible. Well, I'm so glad that uh, DNA backs up what the Bible teaches. So yeah. <laughs> science <laughs> science affirms scripture. So um, so again, friends, go to uh, harbingersdaily.com. It'll be on the homepage probably for a little while. Um, but thank you so much for, for putting that up, uh, Olivier. Let's get into your story now before we quickly run out of time here. Um, you didn't really get into detail the last time we came on about your mother's story and her dad and uh, that she was hidden in France uh, during the Holocaust. So go ahead and walk us through this and just, just share whatever you'd like to on that. Okay, so... Uh that's going back to 1942. My mother was born in 25, so she was uh, she was what 16, 16 years old or so, and uh, she lived in the house where I grew up my whole life. That uh, just my sister and I sold recently after my parents passed. So the you see a picture of my mother on the left in the courtyard of that that house that I I spent my whole life in before I moved to the states. And on the right is her mother. Uh, both are wearing the yellow patch, the Jewish star with the word Juif or Jew in English. Uh, and um, in 1942, my mother's, my her father, uh, a Russian immigrant, married to uh, to 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 uh, my grandmother, uh, did not have the proper papers. It was like he was legally in France, but he did not have what you would the equivalent of a green card in America. He was in the process of getting his papers, and of course, the war the war happened, and that became near impossible to get papers especially at that time. So he was in the building and he knew that it was dangerous. So he was hiding in a cellar under the apartment where, where my, uh, my family lived, where we live. That's him, Maurice Swanzweig right there on the screen. And one evening, two uh, officers from the Gestapo knocked on the door. He was downstairs in the basement uh, hiding. And uh, my uh, grandmother answered and they said, we heard that there is, uh, your husband is uh, here illegal illegally and we need to talk to him. He needs to come with us. So she lied. She said, I don't know where he is. He left. Uh, I have no way to connect with him. And they said, well, you better connect with him because uh, tomorrow morning we'll come back. And if he's not available to come with us, we'll take you and your daughter. Now, my mother and her mother were there 
Jewish, but in France at the time legally, and it was not quite the time where they took all the Jews no matter what. They were starting with, they being the Nazis, were starting with the, the Jews that didn't have papers. It was easier to do it that way at first. So she said, she they left, she signaled her husband, my grandfather came upstairs and she said, they came to get you. And uh, he said, don't worry, I'll go hide somewhere. I will go find a place for us where we can be safe. Stay put, I'll signal you when it's safe. And she said, well, if you do that, uh, they're coming tomorrow and they will take Evelyn and I And if you don't go with them. So he said, well, that cannot happen. I need to go, don't worry, I'll be back. I'll go with them, I'll be back. Next morning, the Gestapo came back. Maurice went with them. I took a, a suitcase with a few a few effects, personal effects, went with them. And on the historical record that I could find, uh, he was taken to Auschwitz uh, uh, and uh, died within the first week or first 10 days of being taken from the house. So he died quickly. That I guess that would be positive, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's a negative. Uh, but I never came back. And, uh, and that led to my mother and her mother getting false papers and moving to a safe house in the southwest of France. Hmm. Amazing. So how, 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 tell us about this transition uh, from where they were over to France and who housed them. Well, so they got false papers, got on the train. Uh, my mother, uh, my, my grandmother stayed in a hotel in the village somewhere, but she couldn't keep my my mother and her two cousins with her because it was too many people and too dangerous to have young kids in, in the open. So she put them on the farm, not too far from, from there, where this uh, this uh, mom and dad, couple of farmers, uh, in the southwest, right above the Pyrenees uh, 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 mountain uh, uh, range, which separates the southwest of France from Spain. Uh, so she put them on a farm. They stayed there on a farm where uh, the, the parents had already uh, the grandmother and three kids of their own, but they took my mother and uh, her two cousins and kept them for the last, a uh, little over two years for the last part of the year of the, of the war and hid them on the farm. And, uh, and then at the end of the war, my mother was uh, reunited with them uh, with her mother and they took the train back to Paris and they got back into their house uh, and the same house that they had left, which was a miracle because many times Jews could not even find their homes anymore. They were taken by Gentiles or Christians who took ownership during the war. So they got back and in 2013, that family, the Dariko family, was uh, was recognized by Yad Vashem in Jerusalem as righteous among the nations. The mom and dad who hid my mother didn't take any money. They, they risked their own lives. They were not Jewish, uh, like, like many people did uh, in Europe, uh, became known as righteous among the nations. And their uh, two sons and my mother were reunited after 70 years uh, with uh, my mother between the two boys they're in their 70s she's in in her 80s and wow. on the right side of the picture the uh, the representative from yad vashem has given them the two brothers the medals on behalf of their deceased parents and they are declared righteous among the nations and they're actually their name is on the wall of remembrance in the very very back of the property at yad vashem uh the husband and and and, and the wife uh, uh, as righteous among the nations. So just a great wow. honor. It's the greatest honor uh, that Israel can give to a non-Israeli citizen. And actually, after their death, they automatic, uh, automatically became uh, honorary citizens of Israel. That's what happens to the righteous among the nations. Wow. And so they were in that picture, and they were the ones that were on that farm in the southwest of France that were hiding your mom and, uh, yeah, and the, the, for the rest brothers, of the war. The two brothers remember uh, the, my mother when she was like 16 and and they were sent pictures by Yad Vashem saying, do you recognize this, this young kid? Was it you on the photo? Was it your property? They did their investigation. It took a few months. And then they said, yes, this is our property. We recognize the door, recognize this. And we recognize Evelyn, my mother. And they connected and that's it. They got, the, uh, they got uh, listed wow. as righteous among the nations. Wow, praise God. It makes you wonder, Olivier, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole or this speculation. It makes you, it makes you wonder if, if even 10 or 15 percent more people during that time would have helped, you know, take care, take in, you know, Jews 
um, how many more could have been saved. But anyway, it reminds me of the, the quote that you have on the front page of your website from Edmund Burke. The only necessary thing for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. And Absolutely. so we're thankful that your mom was saved. And we've got to take a brief pause with Olivier Melnick. The website, again, friends, is shalominmessiah.com. We'll be right back. Introducing Patriot Mobile, the wireless carrier that stands with you. We are committed to supporting the values that make our nation great. With affordable plans and reliable nationwide coverage, Patriot Mobile is not just a wireless service. It's a call to action for those who believe in the American dream. Because this year is not just any year, it's the most important year since our nation's founding. Choose a wireless carrier that shares your values. Choose Patriot Mobile. Get free activation now with promo code David. Friends, if you're listening via audio to this podcast, Apple, Spotify, and many others, leave us a five-star review, please. I've been told that that has helped the show rise in the rankings. It's doing very well, thanks to you. And of course, uh, praise God, may Christ be praised in, in this. And if you're interested in sponsoring Worldview Matters, you can send us an email, worldviewmatters at fpeusa. Dot org. You can go to the website, our website, worldviewmatters.tv. We're back with Olivier Melnick, shalominmessiah.org, talking about his family's story. And now, um, is there anything else you want to share, Olivier, before we take a transition, talk about a few principles and parables? Uh, well, I mean, basically, you know, you know, I'm talking to you right now, and I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be sharing with you, I wouldn't be taking part of the ministry that is so important right now uh, if if it was not for a couple of farmers with really no no connection no power no money just a good heart saying we want to help those kids so uh, uh everybody can do something that's yes. what I'm, that's what I'm hoping excellent point excellent takeaway that means today friends uh, we can help people that are in need, and, and we, we may come across that time Christ, when Christian persecution will be increasing, and um, who knows what's going to happen uh, with Israel. But anyway, uh, we hope, hope we won't revisit world history, but unfortunately, Olivier, I don't think we learned um, you know, that what they say, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. But anyway, uh, what else would you like to talk about? Well, uh, I, I, I think maybe we, we, we can... Uh, uh, move into this uh, network that I think I touched on it uh, last show. I don't know how much we got into it. Do you? I I, I don't recall the details I gave you. The, the, uh, the British Design Network. Uh, the British Design. Yes. Not much. Okay. So go ahead. And so, share. Um, so I've been I've been studying and teaching anti uh, about anti Semitism for the last twenty three years and uh, going on twenty four. And, uh, you know, like four books on, on the topic and many conferences. And as I'm working on this, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see in the last, well, in the last decade, but in the last five or six years, mostly, I'm thinking, what's going to happen when it gets really bad for the Jewish people? And, and of course, it's global. The Jews are everywhere. But I'm thinking America, because this is where I live and about seven plus million Jews in America. And I'm thinking uh Based on what I know of past history and what happened in my own family, where basically the the people who the 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 the, the way my grandfather was given to the Gestapo was a gentleman upstairs from my parents who just said there was a Jew in the building, come get him. And so this could repeat itself. This will yeah. repeat itself because people will 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 continue, uh, you know, uh, to do what they did in the past. And I'm thinking. Uh, what can we do to to, to help uh, alleviate some of that? So about four years ago, a group of us uh, got together, uh, believers uh, across the U.S., and we pretty much had the same idea come together, the same uh, vision that God gave us, where we needed to figure out a way to mobilize and equip Christians so that they would be ready when the time comes. And again, this was at least three and a half years prior to October 7th. Uh, to be ready 
when the time comes to open their homes and rescue Jewish family, rescue Jewish people for a night, for a day, for a week, for a month. We don't know. That's that's beyond the scope of what we can control. But just to say, listen, if it gets that bad, when it gets that bad, my house is their house and uh, co you know modern version of Corey Ten Booms and Oscar Schindler and 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 people like that and so and I call them and I base that on uh, the the parables in uh, Matthew twenty five of the goats and the sheep I call them the new righteous among the nations based on the story I just told you about my mother uh, and. Uh, so we develop this network. We don't advertise it. We don't raise money for it. We don't. Uh, we don't have brochures. We we just tell people, and they reach out to us and they say, "I want to send me more information about the network." We connect with them. We vet them. We get them on the network, and then we ask them a bunch of questions about where do you live? What's your you know? Do you, are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? Are you a carpenter? Are you a lawyer? Are you do you have a plane? Do you have a boat? And then we put them on the network, and then with time, when the, the the time the need comes, and I hope never, but I'm sure I'm wrong, we connect them with a, a family in need. Uh, and so right now we're just building the network, and people are coming in every day from all over the U.S. We have people coming from the rest of the world, but we are not set up to to do anything outside of the U.S. We give them advice, but we don't organize them. Right. And uh, so that's what it is. And people want, if they're interested, they can come to shalomandmessiah.com and go to the connect button on the top right and there they can ask for all kinds of things from us and one line will say connect me with the network i heard about from olivier and that will start the process of vetting and question and, and integrating them into the network wow it sounds like you're going about it right i mean you're trying to you know screen people and you're not oh, really you have to you're not really putting it out there publicly because then you you know someone's the enemy will infiltrate your camp. Yeah, we're not we're not registered with anything. We're we're yeah. not a ministry. We're not an organization, so we don't raise money. But people who want to help us can donate to Shalom and Messiah, so I can spend my time volunteering with the network to further develop it. So yeah, but uh, that network is very very secret, very private, very secure. It has to be. So um. What what are your thoughts? This slightly uh, off topic, but Biden and the administration in America right now, their stance on Israel uh, it seems like they're trying to get Netanyahu to um, compromise, and it's just, it's just really uh, sometimes they speak out of both sides of their mouths. What is your take on what this administration is doing toward Israel right now? Well, it, it looks like it was not enough for this current administration to interfere with politics and, and, and elections in our country. They have to extend it to other countries. Sorry for saying that. I'm not <laughs> sorry, actually. Uh, so so uh, now we have a, a, a sovereign uh, state uh, asking another sovereign state, would you please have another election? We're going to push you to have another election because we want to get rid of your current leader. This is just, it, it, it's never been seen. You know, we're apparently we're friendly, you know, the U.S. and Israel are friendly towards one another. And then the U.S. is saying, get rid of Netanyahu. So uh, it's, I can't believe that they're asking that. I don't think it, it I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I think Netanyahu is going to continue to do the best job he can under the circumstances. I don't think he has much of a future when the war is over. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's had a long run. And, and I think right now, uh, David, I think you and I agree, uh, Bibi is probably the best man for the job right now. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to put somebody like, like Ehud Barak or Ehud Omert or another person uh, uh, in charge because they're, very, they're a lot softer and a lot more liberal. And the last thing you want right now is to, to give anybody the false idea that you can actually communicate and negotiate with Hamas because, right. because you cannot and you should not. Yeah. I mean, it, if, if anybody if anybody had asked the U.S. to negotiate with the people who, drew, who flew the planes into the World Trade Center, they would have said, are you crazy? Why would we do that? It's the same. That is an equivalence. If you want yeah. to do an equivalent, that's equivalent to what's happening right now. So, no, you don't negotiate with Hamas. Well, it, it's a it's an interesting, you know, we've never seen this before, this level of maybe a, I should say a lack of support for Israel in America, who has traditionally been Israel's one of Israel's biggest allies. 
Um, but now we're in a situation where it just flipped from the Trump administration to the Biden administration. Uh, actually, it was Trump was right in between Obama and Biden. But right. um, yeah, you hear, just hear the things that Kamala Harris says, well, the different it, it, statements that they make. And it's just like, come on, are we are we really there? Sad. It's it's all over, and you know, and I, and I, I'm thinking it would be, uh, it, it would make sense if the Bible said something about it. But oh, wait a minute, the Bible does say something about it. <laughs> Zechariah twelve three, but it will be in that day that I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who heave it up will be severely injured, and all the nations of the earth will be gathered against it. All the nations of the earth will be gathered against it. America is not going to be alone in going after uh, after Israel. But, you know, until recently, America was a friend of Israel. Now yeah. this government is becoming an enemy of Israel. And, yeah. you know, and, and further down in Zechariah 12, 9, it will be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. So this is not going unnoticed. God is noticing what's going on. And if America go, friends, if you're watching right now, if America goes against Israel, it doesn't mean that all Americans have to go against Israel. David, right. Olivier, were not going against Israel. There are many Christians, many and non-Christians who are not going against Israel. And may that continue and may that grow. Then may we get more friends for Israel for such a time as this. We need Christians to speak to their Jewish friends and tell them, I've got your back. Amen. I also, Olivier, I wish there was something in the Bible that would explain what happens when a nation blesses or curses Israel. But uh, <laughs> you know Genesis. what? I mean, if if there was something like that, I, I guess we could we, we we would we would find it in Genesis twelve the three 12th chapter, maybe the third verse, <laughs> and that would be a good place to have it. Could you read that for me? Yeah, God said, "I will bless those who bless Israel." and I will curse those who curse Israel. It's very clear and easy to understand. And friends, if you believe in the biblical worldview, that's in our scriptures, and it's very clear. You, it's, I, don't think, I don't think even with mental gymnastics, you couldn't misinterpret that. But um, Olivia, go ahead. I'll give you the last thought. No, I was going to say, and there's no sitting on the fence. That's really important. You bless yeah. or you curse. You cannot say, well, I don't know the Jewish people. I don't have any friends in Israel. I, I'm going to stay neutral. No, no neutrality. You bless or you curse. If you don't bless, by default, you're cursing. Amen. No neutrality. So, friends, again, the website is shalominmessiah.com. Check out his books, also his article over at Harbinger's Daily. Uh, Olivier Melnick, it's always a pleasure catching up with you, brother. Good, good program Thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Shalom. All right, friends, uh, more to come tomorrow. I put the list away so I don't remember. Uh, Paul Blair, Liberty Pastors. That's right. Anyway, uh, conference coming up in Milwaukee. We'll be talking about that. But thank you for your support of the show. God bless you. And as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter. 